Right, the volgende thing we're going to do is then the recency. We've already spoken about this because you actually wrote test about this before. So we're quickly just going to run through this to make sure that you have a bit of revision done here. Good. So the recency will be described as an individual response na aanleiding van bijvoorbeeld a book wat gelees is, a restaurant book, a besoek of a nieuwe film wat beoordeel moet word. So a review is written as an individual's response after they have, for example, read a book, went to a restaurant, or saw a new film that had to be criticized, basically. Recensies word nie altyd volgens a vaste formaat geskryf. So, uh, reviews are not necessarily always written according to a set format, because obviously each type of review will require its own um, format. Okay, dis nie nodig om specific specifieke aspekte van een boek, film of serie te bespreek nie. Goeie recensies probeer om rechtvaardig, maar eerlijk te wees. En humor kan in een recensie gebruik word. So, it is not necessary ne uh, to speak about specific aspects of maybe a book or a film or a CD or something like that. And all good reviews try to be as fair and as honest as possible. Okay? Humor, obviously, is also a good thing when we do this. Good. So, if we look at um, the, the, the example that they've given you here, they start with a title, because remember, it's basically an article that you're writing. Now it says, Call Squirt Cupido Chris Barnard. So this is the title of the book and the author of the book. Then the subtitle says, a verhaal van liefde, a story of love. Recensent, who is the reviewer, Asari Dippenaar, and where is she doing this review from? Pretoria. Paragraph 1, the first paragraph, die boek, die restaurant, die film, noem die specifieke name hier, word aanbeveel vir amal wat van die belangrike dinge in die lewe soos whatever how. So, if you are writing a review about, let's say, a restaurant, then you will say, um, Die restaurant, die gouwe funky, word aanbeveel vir amal wat, be wat um, die belangrike dinge in die lewe soos goeie kos en lekker geselskap hou. Alright, so you're going to name the name of the, the restaurant or the book or the whatever in the first paragraph. And you will say something like, um, this restaurant is definitely something that you should visit if you like the finer things in life, or if you like good food and good company, or whatever the case might be. Obviously, this is for a positive review. Um, you can make it a negative review as well. It's not necessary to remain positive. It can be negative as well. Paragraaf 2 dan is die algemene indruk van die recensent oor dit wat hy of sy beoordeel het. En hier kan, um, al die goed kan in die paragraaf genoem word. So the general impression of the reviewer is then mentioned here about the product or service that he or she then reviewed. So here you give me a general indication. Was this a good book? Was this an easy read? Did you enjoy the story? Uh, did you enjoy the food? Was it a nice atmosphere at the restaurant? Um, was the quality of the movie as good as you expected? Things like that. All right. Specific aspect of what wat beoordeel is, word hier in meer detail beskryf. So in paragraphs 3 to 5, more specific things are mentioned here. Obviously, if you are reviewing a book, then you can maybe talk about uh, specific characters. Are the specific characters in the book, um, are they uh, truthfully portrayed? In other words, do if you if you read the book, do you think this is actually a person that could be alive, or is it completely and utterly um, just this horrible grumpy person rah, 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 running around, and no one is ever like that? Or if you are reviewing a restaurant, you can maybe ask yourself specific questions about specific dishes. Um, 
uh, the, the, the entrees, how are the entrees, how are the main courses, how are the puddings, how is the service, how is the ambiance in the, in the restaurant, those kinds of things, okay? Paragraaf 6, lig nog een aspect hier uit, wat die recensent baie sterk mening oor het, okay? En wat die lezer sal kan help om een besluit te neem. So this, if I may use the cliché, will be the nail in the coffin, okay? Will this topic that you discuss here, this is the one that will make this review either a super positive review or a super negative review or will convince someone to use the product or service or will tell them uh, maybe not, okay? Steer clear. So this can be anything. This can be um, the quality of the product or the service, uh, maybe about the book, the way that it made you feel, or the way that uh, the writer maybe uses uh, bad language, or it was poorly written, or the writing style is maybe not so good. Um, the CD, if it's a, a, well, no one listens to CDs anymore, but if it's maybe a new song or a new album of a of a, um, a musician, then you can maybe talk about the quality of the recordings or um, the, the, the variation in musical styles, anything like that can be mentioned here. Okay, paragraph 7 is dan die slot in aanbeveling. So in paragraph 7, that is where you conclude everything and where you make your um, statement. Should we go watch the movie? Should we not go watch the movie? Would you advise people to stay away from the restaurant or go and visit the restaurant? Those kinds of things. Okay, now, we spoke about this as well. In the case of a book, can the author be called? So in this, the case of a book, the um, distributor or the, uh, the, the publishing house can be mentioned. For example, Tafelberg, the amount of pages and the price can be mentioned. Um, if you remember correctly, in the examples that I gave you in the book, in the in class, then I told you there we can put in here the whole idea. Ne? So the name of the, the story, the author, the publishing house, the amount of pages, the price. Okay. Um, in the case of a film, you tell us the theater, okay, New Metro is the theater, you can tell us the type of film, this is a spannings film, or this is a romance, or this is a comedy, or whatever the case might be, any form of uh, parental guidelines, again, remember, we keep it in English, it doesn't change to Afrikaans, and then if there is an age restriction, you put that in as well. In the case of a restaurant, then you put the name of the restaurant, you put the speciality of said restaurant, for example, uh, beer's place or whatever, then the dress code gets mentioned as well. And remember in the example I gave you in class, there was also um, should, appoint, uh, uh, should bookings be made, and then also the cost of the restaurant. Remember we said Cost is a difficult thing to do with a restaurant because obviously it varies from um, cheap to very expensive depending on the dishes that you order. So you can just say uh, gemiddelde prijse, hoer prijse, la prijse, those kinds of things. Okay, Venka, a few tips and tricks when writing the uh, recency. We spoke about what can be reviewed, so I'm not going to go over that again. Om een mate van objectiviteit te handa, word die tekst gewoonlik in die derde persoon en in die teenwoordige of verlede tijd geskryf. So, to have a form of objectivity, the text is usually written in the third person. So, you're not going to say, ek het baie gemakkelijk gevoel toe, jy, toe ek daar instap. You will say, jy voel gewoonlik gemakkelijk as jy daar instap. Of, as die um, openingstoneel begin, kry jy die gevoel van ek is in een oud-Hollandse stad of whatever the case might be. So you're going to do it in the third person, you're not going to do it in first person and we usually write either in the present or the past tense. 
gebruik woorde wat op waardering of evaluering dui, soos snaaks, genot, opwindend, vermakelijk, belangrijk, uitstaande enzovoort. So use words that indicates appreciation or evaluation. For example, this is a baie snaakse film, this, it's a very funny film. Die koos gee soveel genot, the food gives so much pleasure. Dit is a opwindende uh, type muziek. It's an exciting type of music. Um, die boek is baie vermakelijk. The book is very entertaining. Um, dit is belangrijk om te onthou om of met die rechte eet gereid te eet. It's important to know to eat with the correct utensils. En um, die vlees is van uitstaande gehalte. The meat is of exceptional value. Anything similar to that is fine. Die bespreking moet voldoende feite gee om die leeser te oorreed en om een standpunt te neem. So there has to be enough facts given so that the reader can be convinced or can see your point of view um, or for you rather to take a, a point of view at this point. Die titel gee gewoon een klaar aanduiding van die recensentse gevoel of mening ten opzichte van die saak of die aspect, die plek wat hy of sy beoordeel het. So, the title needs to already give an indication of how you, the reviewer, felt what your opinion was um, towards the saak or the, 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 the case, for example, um, if it's a movie or a CD, what was your opinion about that? If it's a place, what was your opinion about that? And all of those things. So, if we look at this one. Uh, Kool Squid, Cupido, Chris Barnard, A Verhaal van Liefde. So here, in your subheading, for example, you will say, instead of A Verhaal van Liefde with an exclamation mark, you will say A Verhaal van Liefde, question mark because if you do that immediately we know you are questioning whether or not he succeeded in writing a type of book that he wanted to write okay so that is just an example of how you can tell us what you feeling with the title the recency moet on the end on the mark so at the end you need to um, give advice on what you think about this product or service. Is it good? Is it bad? Should we go? Should we not go? All right. Any questions on this, please feel free to send me a message so that we can discuss it further. But we have already done this. You have written a test about this. So I don't think there should be any issues left. Okay. Start the yellow.